happens when you fast? First of all, fasting changes you. Now, why did I say that? Because number two is a contradiction. Fasting does not change God. God never changes. Ain't nothing wrong with God. God ain't clogged up. <laughs> the clogging got to be on the other side. Fasting doesn't change God. It doesn't move God. It moves and changes you. The best way to describe God and your life in a fast is before you fast or live a fasted life, it's almost like a big tank with 50,000 gallons of water in it. And a little pipe is hooked up to it, a small little two-inch pipe to this big tank. The amount of water that's available is 50,000 gallons. But the amount that can flow through your little pipe is one-tenth of a gallon. The amount that's available doesn't change. But the amount that flows out through the pipe depends on the size of the pipe. God is always 50,000 gallons ready to do some stuff, but he can't find pipes to hook up big enough. And most of the pipes hook up to them, they all clog up with sin, food, grits. <laughs> God is ready to work anytime, but he keeps running into these pipes that are so small, clogged up. And they're making plenty of noise, you know. They shouting, claiming, confessing. God said, but you clogged up. The Lord can do anything. Yeah, yeah, he said, but I can't have nothing but this little, this little hole you got. You ain't got a fasted life. Fasting is the most important aspect of prayer. It doesn't move God. Number three, fasting increases your spiritual capacity. It's like going back to the tank, removing the two-inch pipe, and putting a 15-inch pipe to it. <laughs> now, more water can flow. God says, look, I need to find some people who will increase their capacity to handle my flow. Let me tell you something. Okay, let's I'm gonna read the scripture, quote the scripture again. We love the scripture, okay? When there's crime in a country, economic chaos, social decay, immorality in a country, what do we do? Let's call a prayer meeting, we say. So all the bishops get together, and we get in the park, and all the saints come along with their bellies full of grits. <laughs> the bishop belly, bigger than anybody else belly. Oh, watch this now. And they come to pray for what? A nation. Watch it, a nation. Now, you know how big a nation is? Do you know how complicated a nation is? Do you know how complicated crime is and broken homes and, and abuse? These are big problems. And you come to God, a small little pipe. I want you to heal the nation, please. God said, the stuff I need to heal your nation, that pipe ain't going to work. So what's God? If my people who claim to be called by my name if they what okay write the word humble down the word humble in my book I talk about this the word humble to humble means to fast the translation in the English was not a good translation it means to humble it means to fast and pray you want God to heal a big problem? He need a big pipe. The demon that was in that boy must have been a legion. Because they prayed for that little boy, remember? They, they prayed all afternoon and the demon wouldn't come out. 
And when Christ came down from the mountain, it came out in seconds. Question, what was he doing in the mountain? Well, read the verse before. It says he ran aside alone to pray and to fast. When he came down, no food. Fellas down there full of fish. <laughs> come out, come out. Demon said, Yo, your pipe too small. I ain't coming out of this brother. And the Bible says, Jesus just said, out. Demon <laughs> left. The disciples prayed the same prayer. Jesus prayed. Different results. And they were ashamed, the Bible says. Because all the people saw that. And the next morning, they were at a meal. And they were all quiet. I don't blame them. They were sitting in the room, everybody eating like they're spiritual. <laughs> they're all thinking, he just embarrassed us before all them people. And one of them built the courage. And Peter said, Lord, why couldn't we cast that demon out yesterday? Christ says, well, this kind doesn't come out just by prayer. This needs a big capacity. If you are trying to figure out something right now in your life, for the last six months, maybe a year, maybe two years, you've been trying to work on something, and it seems as if it just wouldn't break. I'm giving you the biggest secret now. If you know you're supposed to have it, if you know it's God's will and the promise in the word, if you know this is God's legal right for you, if you know you're supposed to have it, then you're supposed to break that thing. And you break it by fasting. This is going to be the best three weeks you ever spent in your life. Things that were held up for three years are going to come out in three weeks. When God has a capacity big enough, he, when he begins to flow, every demon that was holding back will be swept away by the power of God flowing through a fasted life. Are you ready to fast? Say yes. Fasting is the most powerful force in prayer. It widens your pipe. It cleans out all the dirt. It wipes out all the refuse. It takes away every hindrance that was holding you back. That's why the devil loves you to eat. Especially when you set your face to fast. That's when they want to take you out for lunch for your birthday and pay for it. I'm telling you, you watch the next three weeks, I'm telling you, every demonic influence will show up. Promise me. But you remember what I said tonight. Just tell the temptation, I know why you came. And you ain't going to win. Because I'm going to clean this pipe out in the next three weeks. More work is done by fasting and prayer than work itself. Save yourself a lot of struggle by fasting and prayer. Write this down. Fasting breaks habits and spiritual bondage. Habits. Now, when we say habits, the first thing you think about is cigarettes and drugs and alcohol. But let me tell you something. There's some habits you get that are destroying your life. Some of you got to break the habit of television. You religiously watch certain programs. LMN. <laughs> Oxygen. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm getting in trouble now. It's a habit, and it steals your time. And sucks away your spiritual life. Feeding stuff to your spirit. You can fast. Coca-Cola. A habit. Fasting breaks habits. You got habits with pornography. Man, you lock into a fast. I'm talking about a serious fast like this one. And you say, Lord, three weeks. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit has some power that will break your mental bondage from that stuff. You only can break it with a fast. You keep praying for God to remove things and they won't go away. You need to fast. Unfaithfulness to your spouse is a habit. Fasting, break that thing. Sex. Fasting will bring sex back in order faster than anything else can. The bondage that you are under 
Prayer alone doesn't break most of that bondage. You need to fast. Number five, fasting quiets the heart to hear God's voice. You know, when I was a young teenager, when I began to fast, that's when I began to get revelations about the kingdom. Fifteen years old, I began to fast. And I saw a Bible that my parents never saw. God can speak to you things that he cannot speak to you while you're chewing. No one taught you this. They didn't teach me either. I had to go learn this. Fasting quiets the heart so you can hear God. It calms down the distractions. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have more peace in your mind the next three weeks than any other time in the last five years. Because fasting calms your spirit because your spirit becomes more important than your body and it takes over. And your spirit ain't got no problems. Did you know that? Only your mind. And when your spirit becomes bigger than your mind and your body, your mind becomes subject to your spirit and your spirit is full of the peace of the kingdom. It brings quietness. On a fast, after you hit the eighth day, you become, watch this, you can become very nice to everybody. On the eighth day, some of you have been through this, because all of a sudden your whole life takes on a purity, you see people properly. There's a peace. Fasting quiets the heart to hear God's voice. And number six, fasting brings godly intimacy. Oh, I long for fast because of this one. I just can't wait to fast. I fast all through the year. But this fast, I sanctify for the whole church and for those watching us around the world. I, 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 I try and, and build into you a love for fasting. Because fasting makes intimacy with God a priority. Ooh. When you begin to give away control of your body, you attract God to your spirit. 